Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. I have got something brand new and exciting to show you. When I say brand new, I mean brand new to me, brand new to Claire's, brand news to Claire's Craft Corner. Um, something I've never tried before, but something I've been yearning, yearning to try ever since I saw people on TikTok and YouTube, of course, using this stuff. Um, been around forever, been around forever, and I'm pretty sure like 95% of you will have already tried this at some point in your creative career. But it's new to me and it has blown my blown my mind. I'm obsessed with it. I'm so obsessed. I've created a few things already, some of which are just shockingly disastrously tragic, but that's all part of the fun. Now, in the last video, some of you would have remembered this. So I tried to use this as a stencil in my bezels. It didn't really work, but it kind of worked, half worked. Um, this is just a wood die cut. I got some miniature sharks cut for me by Moray over at Lothian Woodworks. And I had this left over, so I tried to use it as a stencil because what I really wanted were diddy, tiny, teeny little miniature sharks because I can't hand draw. I'm not very good at hand drawing. However, this worked. <clears throat> It would work on a flat surface. So many of you gave me suggestions. You could use vinyl. You could, you know, draw around this on flat acetate, cut it out. That got me thinking because I'd seen this amazing, incredibly talented artist on TikTok shrink plastic. Shrink plastic. Will it work? I'm literally spitting everywhere. So excited. Um, this is the one I bought. I bought the Sizzix, not sponsored, purchased myself. Sizzix shrink plastic from Amazon one side frosted one side shiny so I watched a couple of videos on the difference between them and what best tools to use and guys Posca pens come to the rescue yet again I've got Posca pens so really all I needed was this this is all I needed to purchase was the shrink plastic I've got the Posca pens I've got the permanent markers I've got my heat gun because for resin or you could put this in the oven as well but I'm going to use my heat gun because that's what I saw this girl do and we're going to create some miniature stop it okay we're gonna start the video because i don't usually talk at the beginning and i don't know if you guys have switched off already you might have already left me but if you have never used this before and you are here for it and you're excited or if you have used it before but you've never used it for this stay around we've got the most beautiful open bezels that i've ever seen in my life we're doing oceans under the sea let's get to it so i went on to amazon and typed in ocean themed open bezels and these came up and oh my goodness me they are beautiful the detail is insane on some of these they are quite large they've got dolphins and starfish and shells and really intricate on some of them and the one with the star oh my gosh the one with the waves I'm not 100% keen on but the others are right up my street so 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 pretty the one thing I will say is they're not very deep so I wasn't really sure how this was going to work out or how many layers I could actually get in there but this is the whole pack you get loads okay now for the shrink wrap I wasn't sure what shrink wrap to go for, honestly, but the girl I saw on TikTok, I need to try and remember her name. I'm going to see if I can find her and I'll link her below. Um, but she uses this one, which is shiny one side and then almost like sanded and frosted on the other side. And she recommends painting on the frosted side because it's the frosted side that really holds the paint pens really, really well. First thing I decided to do was use this wood as a stencil. So I am using my permanent Sharpie fine tip marker just to get right down in there. It still didn't get down in all of the gaps, but it did enough to give me a decent shaped shark. Then I'm using my Posca paint pen. Now, apparently you can use any paint pens, but all I have is Posca. So of course, if you've got a whole collection of pens, you go for it. Posca pen, I believe, is what most people use. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos as well, and they all seem to use the Posca paint pens, to be honest. Um, they come in loads of bright different colours and all of that jazz. I'm limited. I've had these a couple of years, and I've kind of run out of a few, but I do have the black. Now, what I'm looking for is that silhouette. If you want to make your sharks and your shrink plastic more bright and colorful more realistic like if you want to paint them the proper colors then by all means <laughs> i do not have that talent so the first thing i did here is i did a couple of the bigger ones i did the hammerhead shark and a couple of other sharks and i cut out some bigger ones first just to really show you because visually 
they shrink, guys. I really wanted to show you a bigger one first so you get an idea of the shrinkage. Now I'm using this silicon cake tin and I'm also using my metal hammer to hold it in place. I'm like pinning it in place. If you don't pin it in place, it will fly. <laughs> it will fly away, fly around and fly away. Watch this magic happen. Now, at first, it kind of freaked me out. I was like, wait, have I just ruined it? But the more you heat it, the more it shrivels and it ends up going completely back to its flat form, to its flat positioning. Now, the girl I follow on TikTok did this. She put something weighty down on top of it. So as soon as she burned it, um, melted it up and shrunk it, she then flattened it, completely flattened it out. She said, if you don't do this, sometimes some of the edges might be a bit curled up, but yeah. So I just grabbed my, the nearest jar to me, just a, a flat bottom glass jar. And I just pressed it down until they kind of cooled. I counted to about 10 and that was enough. So here are two of the medium sized sharks. And then I decided to, to try like a diddy a diddy shark and I thought this is where this is where I'm gonna literally lose it to the point where I can't see it anymore it's gonna shrink so so much and look at this this is so so tiny it is ridiculous this is what I was looking for I was looking for the teeniest diddiest little creatures sea creatures that you could possibly get for your bezels now that is the hammerhead. That's the original hammerhead that was already tiny. And now we have gone super tiny, super miniature. I'm just topping up the surface. The surface is still quite rough. So I'm just topping it up with the Posca. So here is what happens when you don't pin them down. You can add your heat to them, but they really are quite fly away. So pinning them down really is something I would recommend with a metal hammer or anything metal, you know, a screwdriver or a knitting needle, anything you have really to hold them down. Look at these. These are ridiculous, guys. <laughs> Honestly, will I do sharks again? No, I've got to be honest with you guys. This was super fiddly. It was fun, but it was really, really fiddly. I've been playing around with other things for them as well. So I will show you that in a second. But how cute are they? Would vinyl be easier? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm not pretending it wouldn't be. But the idea of using shrink plastic was just so exciting to me. I decided to just do three bezels in this video. You know, doing any more is kind of sometimes a lot. And I like the look of three things on screen. These are stunning. These are the three that I chose. Now, these will be linked down below in my Amazon storefronts. I've got UK, Canada and USA Amazon storefronts. There is a page not actually called Oceans. You will find these in there and yay for new gloves. Guys, I went on a hunt for new gloves that had really good ratings, really good reviews. I found with my black night trial gloves, I could only really use them twice and they'd rip. And I was really trying to find gloves that would maybe last a bit longer, to be honest. So these gloves came up bright pink. Hello. But the reviews were great. So welcome pink gloves. First thing I'm going to do here now, I am using coloured UV resin, Violet's resin. If you do not have coloured UV resin, you can colour your own UV resin using resin dyes. Equally, you could also use epoxy resin in this project. It's just you'd have to wait 24 hours or, you know, eight to 10 hours even between layers. So right now, UV resin for me is the easiest thing to use, but please use whatever it is you have. Don't go out of your way to try and buy UV resin if it's not something that you generally use. First up, I'm using the colored, like I said, I'm using the ocean green and the blue from Let's Resin just to give me some kind of color in my base layer. Now, like I said at the beginning, these bezels aren't very deep. I think that's what lets these down. If these had a really good, like three or four mil deep wall around the edge, I would love them even more but as they are they are really really thin now they're not flimsy or bendy they're just super thin next up they went under the uv lamp for 200 seconds and now i'm just adding in a clear layer of my uv resin i am using uv resin by vista and i'm just going to spread that over and burn it with my lighter to get any air bubbles out at this point i wasn't really sure 
where the resin would go because there was so much embellishment around the edges I wasn't sure how it would act with that if that makes sense next up we are putting in our shrink plastic sharks <laughs> they look so small I was toying with the idea of making loads because I thought that's they're just not big enough now <laughs> like the bezels are too big but I did play around with my placement and I decided to put two in one of them one big one in the middle and a teeny tiny little one all by itself on the left hand side a little bit more of that clear UV whacked it with my long neck lighter and under the UV light for 200 seconds it is now time to kind of top them up, but I want to add in the white ocean waves again. I've really loved the white ocean waves from my previous video. And what you'll see me doing here is just laying down some clear UV resin first before I add in the white. Now for the white, I'm actually just mixing up a small amount of clear UV resin and a teeny, teeny, teeny dot of white acrylic paint there are many ways to do this and I know a few of you did say you know you can use your heat tool to get the cells honestly I've done that before on my channel last year the year before and the year before I just feel like with bezels this small any any kind of heat going on these I'm just gonna blow the resin straight out of the edge of the bezel so that is honestly not something I wanted to do the one in the middle here started to cure now it's very hot here in the UK but I'll be honest, I was a bit surprised. This it was overcast. It was it didn't make any sense to me. I know that UV light cures UV resin. I know that. But it's never done this to me before. Look, it's setting. It's never done this to me before. And the sun wasn't even coming in the window because it was overcast. But yeah, of all the days. <laughs> anyway, I put them under the UV light for 200 seconds. And it is time for the final top coat. I absolutely love these I will say I saw a difference in my waves this time it's almost like my waves produced cells on their own and that is because I used less white paint it was almost like my the resin that I was putting in wasn't very very white it was almost like a transparent white and that has definitely given me a lot more texture and depth and that kind of cell look to my waves but yeah that is all I'm doing. I am dragging this UV resin out to the edge of these bezels. And I'll be honest, they took a lot more resin than I was expecting them to take. I thought I'd be lucky if I could even get two layers in there, but they really handled it well. And I've still got a nice dome on some of them. So I was really happy. I was able to fit in everything that I wanted to fit in. This is what they are looking like. I think they're just beautiful it does help that the open bezels themselves are just, they're just stunning absolutely stunning like you, you can't, just can't get prettier bezels i was so happy when i found them now as for taking them off the tape they came off a dream here you can see the backs of the bezels are completely flat so i had no issues with leaks no issues whatsoever with that uv resin seeping down out and under but here's the thing <laughs> I don't like the backs again. I've made them way too clear. And I think it was deceiving because I had them on blue tape. It was deceiving just how much of that blue coloured resin actually came through. It was deceiving for me. So my plan now is to back them again. Now this was advice that so many of you gave to me from my first bunch that I did about a week, two weeks ago and I didn't like the backs. They were just too clear um, and some of you did suggest either painting the backs or using UV nail varnish for the backs or using even more UV resin for the backs. The, the, the possibilities really and truly are endless. I actually could have, if I thought about it, I could have just used my Posca pen on the back and painted it blue and yeah, put a, put a clear UV resin coat on the back, but I didn't even think about that until right now. But yes, the possibilities are absolutely endless. You can do this project any way you want to do this project. This was very intentional for me. I knew exactly what I wanted, how I wanted to do it. Again, the shrink plastic was the predominant factor here. I wanted to try the shrink plastic. So yes, you could use vinyl. Yes, you could draw them on if you wanted to. Absolutely, yes, you could get a stencil. You can do this any way you want to do it. But guys, look at these. 
oh my goodness me. Now, I did add some coloured UV resin to the back, but it wasn't dark enough for me. I wanted a dark blue to really offset that silver. So you saw me there, I just added one drop of resin dye into each and I swirled it around and mixed it into the resin whilst on the surface. Honestly, it's okay. I wouldn't do that again. I would rather mix it in a cup and get it mixed properly. But check this out. Look at this. Look at this. I made a little badge with the shrink pla plastic and stamps, guys. I need to try it. I need to have a play. But that is definitely something else that kind of like I made on the side. I just wanted to give you a quick look at that to show you what else we can do here. We don't just have to make bezels. We don't just have to make sharks. The world is our absolute oyster. I've got some gorgeous, gorgeous surfboard molds to make my own mold. I've got some surfboard acrylic blanks. We could also change some of those into shrink plastic surfboard keychains come on the possibilities are endless i'm so excited to try the shrink plastic again and i just realized i learned as well that in america or canada i think it's the americas you guys call it shrinky dink how cute is that shrinky dink i don't know if you still do i know that's what it was called back in the day like <laughs> in the in the 20th century when it first came out but i hope you've really enjoyed this one i hope you feel inspired to have a play with shrink plastic because it's the cutest thing in the world the one thing i will say if you want a standard size key ring, make sure you make your original design big, <laughs> like really big. I don't know how much bigger things work with the heat gun. You might have to put them in the oven, but definitely do your research if you want to have a play. Anything small, you can get away with your heat gun, but I'm definitely going to try bigger things just to see how far we can push it without me having to put it in the oven because ugh, I hate cooking at the best of times. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.